All right, 2 Timothy 4. The title of my sermon this evening is Youth Groups and Youth Pastors. Part of the chapter that I want to focus on is in verse number 3 and 4 of 2 Timothy chapter number 4. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. It seems like today in churches, the youth program is what it seems to be making or breaking a church. Out soul winning, you hear a lot of times, or if you talk to somebody about getting in church, about uh, your church or, or what have you, they'll say, what do you have for my kids? What do you guys have for, for teenagers? What do you guys have for uh, the, the younger kids? So translation is, I don't want any know, to know any specifics. I don't care too much. But in general, what are you going to do? What is your church going to do to babysit my kids so I can go into big church and get my spiritual on? That's what they want to know. Yeah. Is it not enough that you dump your kids off to family or daycare five days a week while mama goes to work? You go to ball practice one night a week, and then you have ball games, so coach is taking care of them then. And then you dump them off to parents or someone else on Saturday night so you and hubby can have date night. And then on Sunday, we need another babysitter. So you look for the youth group. What time are you spending with your children? It's always somebody else's responsibility to watch and raise your kids, and the youth group is no exception in these people's eyes. Because you want to dump them off somewhere. You want somebody else to raise your kids. And we wonder why youth groups are so popular. Because parents want to shift the responsibility. Parents want somebody else to do their job to make life easy for them. Somebody else to do it. But I want to show you that youth groups and youth pastors actually destroy and hurt the cause of Christ. And I'm sick of it. I am sick of youth groups. And I am sick of youth pastors. And I'm sick of hearing about how fun they are. I'm sick of it. And I'm going to preach against it tonight from the Bible. Go to Ephesians chapter number 4. A youth pastor is a fake position. It is a fake position for you to be a youth pastor. And I get so sick of these guys bleeding money from the church that could be sent on missions or could be spent on something about winning somebody to Christ. I get so sick of these guys. Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What title does your youth pastor fall under, huh? He's a youth what? A youth pastor, right? Is that accurate? That's what you want to call him. He's my youth pastor and he's just such a fun guy. Go to 1 Timothy 3. So if he's a pastor, he needs to meet the qualifications of being a pastor. Yep. So number one, if he's a youth pastor, does he meet the qualifications of being a pastor? 1 Timothy verse number th or 3, chapter 3, verse number 2. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. How many church youth pastors do you know that aren't even mad? There's just some single dude, a single fun dude. Who in the right mind thinks it's smart to get a single young dude and put him in a room full of a bunch of young girls that he could probably lust after? He can't, he can't take care of that lust with his wife. So where's he going to unleash that lust? On the children? All right, idiots. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Show me a youth pastor that has the aptitude of teach. Yeah. We've got 22-year-old, 23-year-old, 24-year-old guys running around here that are youth pastors. They've never done nothing. They've never done anything. They've went to cemetery. They go to cemetery or Bible college, and they get fresh out of Bible college, and that's like a stepping stone position. You're not going to put them as lead pastor, so you're going to put them as youth pastor. Usually they start them out with the little bitty kids when it's most important that they're hearing doctrine and then you're going to move them up to youth pastor and then eventually I'm a senior pastor somewhere. What a joke. What a joke. But many of them are brand new. They're fresh. They're not apt to teach. They don't have the aptitude to teach. 1 Timothy 3 verse 4. One that ruleth well his own house. Again, having his children in subjection with all gravity. We knew a youth guy. He was a youth pastor and he would invite all the kids to his house. All the teenage girls to his house. All the teenage boys to his house. And him and his wife. And they had no kids. 
They had no kids, which is bizarre. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. And the Bible says to avoid the very appearance of evil. And you know what? Young man, youth pastor, you have no business having some teenage girl at your house. No business at all. Unless it's your daughter. No business at all. Verse number 6. It says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Again, is he meeting qualifications? Is he apt to teach? Does he have the aptitude to teach the Bible? Or is he fresh out of Bible college? Never spoke in public. Never done anything like that. The guy's a novice. And you're putting him in there. Why? Because he's fun. Because he's hip. Because he's cool. And you don't care. As long as he doesn't do anything crazy, you don't care. As long as he babysits your kid. So you can go in there and ooh and ah and jam for Jesus. And I'm just spiritual. And I'm feeling the Holy Spirit all over me. You don't care what's going on back there. As long as they're not molesting your kids, you don't care. You wouldn't even know it until it's after after it's happened. First Timothy 3 1. There's only two positions in a church that the Bible describes. First Timothy 3 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. So there we have one. Secondly, verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. So two positions in one church. A bishop and a deacon. That's it. A pastor, which is used synonymously with deacon or with a, a, a elder, pastor, bishop, and a deacon. So are there two pastors in this church? You're calling this guy a youth pastor and this guy's the senior pastor. So are there two pastors? No, there's only supposed to be one pastor per church. So do we have two churches? A church is a congregation. Technically, why? Because you have the youth congregated here, and then you have the rest of the church congregated here. So, I mean, is that two churches? What's going on? It's a little confusing. To make it biblical, the youth guy would have to take the youth separate and be a totally separate church. Uh, autonomous from the, the regular church. Uh, he wouldn't answer to a lead pastor. He would be his own pastor. Again, is he ordained? Secondly, does he meet the qualifications in uh, 1 Timothy 3? So if he meets those qualifications and he's got his separate congregation and he's not under the authority of the other church, that's the only way to make that biblical. And how weird is that? You start a whole church of just, oh, my kids go to this church. All of the kids of this church go to this church. Isn't that weird? It is weird and it's backwards. The position for a youth pastor is fake. It's a man-made position. It is fake. You say, well, maybe he's a deacon, okay? A deacon's almost like an assistant pastor now, you know? And again, we're fixing to get into... Uh, another aspect that, that's wrong about the youth group and the youth pastors even if you said hey he meets the qualifications of a, of a deacon you're not supposed to separate the church okay go to Deuteronomy 31 you're not supposed to separate the church so number one it's a fake man made position where we're calling this guy a pastor we're saying that this guy's a pastor and many times it's just some kid it's some kid that's 25 years old, and he's just fun, and he's just hip, and he's just cool, and he watches all the Hollywood movies, and he, he knows all the Hollywood references. He can, he can uh, uh, throw out all of the Hollywood cliches. He listens to all the hip music. It's like a rave back there when they got their, 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 their lights going on and their fog machine, and everything's hip, and everybody's playing, uh, eating pizza, and everybody's playing Xbox. They think it's just a grandiose time, and this guy has no business. He's not apt to teach. He's not married. He's not a pastor. But you want to call him a pastor and you want to pay the guy X thousands of dollars or whatever to go back there and entertain your kids. That's the best gig that you can get a 14-year-old girl. You know, a lot of 14-year-old, 15-year-old girls, they, they get babysitting jobs. That's how they support themselves. They love it. They get babysitting jobs. That's, what, that's who should be your youth pastors. We should say, hey, we, you, could, you don't have to pay this guy 50, you know, 50 grand a year. You can hire this little 14-year-old uh, girl. She does babysitting for $8 an hour. And she can come and babysit your kids while you're in the big church. Because that's all you want. That's all you want. That's all you care for. You want somebody to babysit your kids. Deuteronomy 31. Today it's looked as normal to separate families. But it is not biblical to separate families. Not biblical at all. Ezra 10 verse 1. It says, Now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled in him out of the Israel every great congregation of men and women and children. For the people wept very sore. So there you have congregated men, women, and children. Deuteronomy 31, that's where you are. Verse number 12, Deuteronomy 31, 12. Gather the people together, men, women, and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. And that their children, watch this, 
which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land whether you go over to Jordan to possess it. What are they hearing and learning in youth group, huh? What uh, In children's church, in nursery. Because you even saw it, they said, which have not even known anything. What are the little babies hearing whenever they go to nursery? What are they hearing? What are the little kids learning whenever they go and they're stringing macaroni noodles in there and they're singing some, some song, huh? What are they learning? What are they learning in youth group, huh? What are they learning? Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Because I'm telling you, they're not learning the Word of God. They're not learning. The Bible says that they may hear and they may fear and they may learn the Word of God. They may learn to fear the Lord your God. There's multiple warnings in the Bible about people that want to separate themselves, people that want to separate the congregation. 2 Peter 2 verse 1, it says, There were false prophets among you, among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Jude one nineteen. Jude one nineteen. While you're going there, I want to read for you. James 3.15 It says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Jude, verse 19, it says, These be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having a spirit. Sensual, always based on a feeling. How do you feel? How does it make you? Hey, bro, how you feeling tonight? How you feeling tonight? Guys acting like some kind of open mic night comedian. How you feeling tonight, bro? Huh? How you feeling? It's all based on sensuality. Youth groups are all based on feeling. They all try to create some kind of mood in there, some kind of environment to make you laid back, to make you relax. Here's video games. Here's popcorn. Here's pizza. Here's uh, uh, some Christian rap. Here's the fog machine. Here's the lights. Here's the low lights. Here's table tennis. All of this stuff that appeals to your flesh. All of this stuff that is sensual. And the Bible says these are they that separate themselves sensual not having the Spirit. So you need to stay away and you need to keep your kids away from something that plays into sensual. Their senses, their flesh. Go to 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. And whenever you do that, whenever you start... Making an environment that's sensual, making an environment where you take your kids and you separate them and you put them over here, it's like a petri dish for sodomites. It's like a petri dish for false teachers, for people to creep in. It's ease of access. I can go in there. We personally know a guy that was helping out in the youth group. And again, it's the big youth group. And it's having fun. And it's all the, all, all the, uh, the you know, they have the Super Bowl parties and the Xbox. And, and we're all singing with Lecrae, some gangster rap Christian garbage filth. So they're doing all of that stuff. And this guy is addicted to pornography. And had been addicted to pornography for a long, long, long time. So you've got this pervo in there with the kids. And the pastor, he, he sort of knew about it. Because the guy had an issue and the guy went to perv camp. Okay, So he goes to pervo camp and magically gets healed of his, porno his pornography addiction. And then guess what? He's working back with the youth after a period of time. And he says, the pastor says... I I am fully comfortable with his salvation and him being in there. So you need to check yourself whenever somebody brought it up to it that this guy has an issue with pornography and he's in the youth group. You guys know what I do for a living. I see these people creep into youth groups and molest kids. I see these women creep into youth groups and seduce young teenage boys. I've seen it. This is a breeding ground for wickedness. The youth group is. But you like it because you want your kids occupied while you're in big church and can learn something from the pastor. It's wicked. Compromise, 2 Timothy 4. Two, I'm sorry, yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 4. The youth pastor, he'll compromise to keep his job. He's going to compromise to keep his job. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 says, The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They're not going to tell them the truth. They're going to be the fable teller. You know, They're going to tell them fables. Why? They want to keep you happy. They want to keep them kids happy. And if those kids are turning away from the truth, then they're going to be like, oh wow, if I don't turn away from the truth and tell these kids what they want to hear, these kids are going to leave and I'm going to get fired. 
And it also says, and they shall turn their ears from the truth and be turned into fables. So this guy's going to be telling fables, telling stories, whatever stories come to mind, just to keep them engaged with that. You know the youth group, they always have the name uh, Ignite or, you know, all of these stupid names. They can name theirs Aesop, like Aesop's Fables. So that's what they need to name it. Fables, story times like with little kids. I'm going to tell you a little story, kids. We're going to talk about Little Red Riding Hood. And then after that, we're all going to take a nap here on the thing. We're going to play some video games, and then we're going to take a nap. We're going to roll out things. We're going to have nappy time, and we're going to turn the lights down. That's exactly what it is. It's like daycare. It's like daycare. You say, well, you're being silly. Go to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Keep your finger over in 2 Timothy. You say, you're being silly. Isaiah 47, verse 2 says, Take the millstones, grind the mill, and cover the locks. Make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the riverness. He says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yes, thy shame shall be seen. Nakedness, the Bible defines as from the loins to the thighs, okay? So, what if the youth guy preaches that to the 13 year old girls? You got those 13 year old girls in there, and the youth guy preaches that. Proverbs 7 10. It says, Behold, there went him a woman with the entire of an harlot and subtle of heart. If you got the youth guy that stood up and said, Hey, young lady in, your, in my audience, you can dress like a harlot. You, can, you need to cover up your nakedness. You don't need to wear these short shorts. You're causing your other men to lust. It's immodest. It's wicked. And the Bible says that you're naked. And you need to put on some clothes. Yep. And if he gets up and he yells that, guess what's going to happen? Little Miss Cheerleader, she's going to go tell Daddy. And Daddy puts a lot of money in the offering plate. And Daddy's going to go tell the senior pastor, right. I'm going to tell on you, you hurt my angel's feelings. My angel, she can dress like a whore if she wants to. <laughs> so she goes tell senior pastor, and senior pastor thinks, I can't have Mr. Moneybags quitting. Mr. Moneybags, man, he throws a lot of money. And Mr. Moneybags is friend with Sister Moneybags. And they'll both leave. And my check will go down. And my, my, my uh, livelihood is threatened. So... I agree with you. That is too rough of an approach. And they're going to go and he's going to fire the youth guy. He's going to let him go and he's going to fire him. So why do you think that there's not youth pastors today preaching the truth? Because they're compromising. Why? Because they have to. Because that's their job. That's their job. Because if they don't compromise, they're going to get fired. Guarantee it that they're going to get fired. So they're not going to get fired. They're going to start telling you fables. That's what they're going to do. Go to 2 Timothy 3. The next thing is dumbing down. Dumbing down. They have a purpose of dumbing your kids down. There's an article. It says, Parents frequently demand that the church hire a youth director or pastor whose primary job description is to teach their kids, keep their kids engaged in church. This engagement takes place preferably through weekly activities, contemporary music activities, and youth centers equipped with video games and comfortable lounge areas exclusively reserved for teens. Youth pastors are expected to be hip, accessible, relevant, and responsible. They need to be a master at keeping teens occupied. And that's a source from uh, an article talking about the dumbing down of youth ministries. But they cater to irresponsibility. 1 Corinthians 13 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things comes a time that we need to grow up. Kids, there comes a time that you need to grow up at some point. Well, 1 Peter 2.2 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory now, forever, and, or and forever. Amen. No teenage, and there's no teenagers in the Bible. It goes from child to man. You don't ever see this transition of teenager where they're expected, they're no, they're no responsibility or anything like that. From child, it, they grow into teenagers. And those two verses talk about as newborn babes, you grow with the sincere milk of the Word. Are they hearing the Word in that youth thing? Are they hearing the Word? No. They're hearing a sermonette at best. They're not hearing the Word of the Lord. Okay, so they're not going to grow. And you know what? They're not going to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because they're singing the Christian rap songs. Why? Because they're getting a little devotion, a little feel-good, a little pick-me-up, something that is sensual, that appeals to their flesh. 2 Timothy 3, are you there? 2 Timothy 3, verse number 15. He says, In that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, not the latest lyrics to the Christian rap song, Notice what it says, from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So, from a child, 
your kids need to be hearing the Bible. They need to be hearing the Bible preached from a child. They need to be knowing and hearing the Holy Scriptures. We take our kids out soul winning most of the time. We need to be teaching our kids to go soul winning. Lamentations 3.27 said it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Youth groups still have an occasional event where they go and canvas and pass out tracks or they'll go and clean up leaves in the old people's yard or build a deck or whatever. All you're showing these people is that we only work for God on special events. That's the only time we work for God. Special events. Once in a while, great while, we'll go pass out tracks or anything like that. I promise you, I would be absolutely shocked if you could find me one kid in a youth group around Knoxville, one kid that could properly get somebody saved and preach the gospel. I would be shocked if that could happen. Shocked if that could happen. Again, we're not teaching kids to work. We're showing them that it's okay to be irresponsible. It's okay to come and just lounge. It's okay to play your Xbox. And while we're supposed to be having church times, because that's cool for you, man. I understand. I dig it. it. We're teaching these kids not to be responsible. We're trying to teach our kids to be responsible here. We're trying to teach these kids that souls matter. We're trying to teach these kids that the Bible matters, that the actual words of the Bible matters, that specifically what the Bible teaches matters. Go to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. I'm going to start this stopwatch on my phone. In the book of Genesis, it says everything brings forth after its kind. You got all these fun mega centers that have popped up everywhere? It's because people want the same thing they got in youth group. That's why they're popping up. That's why they're so popular. Because everybody, they have party time, and it starts from a little kid. All you're doing is doing a coloring page and listening to some fun music and dancing. And then we go on, and you got a woman that's your Sunday school teacher. And then when you grow up, same thing happens. Then you get in youth group, and we're partying, we're having fun. And then what happens when you're an adult? You want the same thing. And that's why you don't mind that there's a woman preacher. It doesn't bother you at all that Beth Moore is teaching this class. It doesn't bother you at all that Joyce Meyer is teaching this. Why? Because that's what happened in youth group. That's what happened in Sunday school. But you want the same thing. Approximately two people die every second. You all know that? That seems like a lot, doesn't it? In the entire world, two people die. Almost two people die every second. It's crazy to think about. Isaiah 5, or yeah, 5, verse 11. Look at it. It says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that they continue until night to wine and flame them. Think about it. So they rise up early, so they may follow strong drink. You strong, follow strong drink, wine. It's talking about a picture of indulgence, fun. That's what you look for. You look to indulge your flesh. Verse number 12. It's what these people are looking for, to indulge the flesh. Verse 12, and the harp, and the vial, and the tabret, and the pipe, and the wine are in their feasts. So they have the music going on. They got the food going on. They got the, they got the buffalo wings going on. They got it going on. They got the music. They got the latest Christian rap, Christian rock, hill song, or whatever other garbage they have. Look what it says. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. They don't care about the work of God. They're busy. They got their, they got their music going on. Verse number 13. Therefore, because of this, therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude is dried up with thirst. It says my people are in captivity. Captivity of what? Depression. Whenever they get older, divorce. What are these kids under the captivity of? Alcoholism, pornography. It happens. Day in, day out. Youth groups. It happens. Porno addicts, pill addicts, alcohol addicts, coming out of youth group. Day in, day out. Trust me. I see it. And you know what? Any godly person that's left, look at the verse. It says their honorable men are famished. They don't have the strength to do anything. They can't fight against this youth group machine. And you know what? If there's an honorable child among them, chances are they're unstable. They don't have a good foundation. And they're going to get devoured by the wickedness of these bad eggs that, get, that are in there as well. But the pastor's going to push it. He's going to push huge group because he's going to think that it's going to give more growth. And you have more growth, there's going to be more money in his pocket. Better, better pension, better uh, uh, health insurance, whatever. 
Isaiah 5, 14, look what it says. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Why? Because of all of these things. These people have their music. They regard not the work of the Lord. Their honorable men are famished. They're in captivity. Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. So they're sitting there. Hell's enlarged itself daily. We're looking at almost three and a half minutes and I'd have to figure it out as far as seconds go. Two, two people die every second. Two people die. Slip off to hell. Slip off to hell. Slip off to hell. And hell's enlarging itself. Why? Because you've got your music, but you're regarding not the work of the Lord. And now you're in captivity because you don't hear the word of the Lord. Now you're in bondage because you don't hear the word of the Lord. And these kids are dealing with addiction. These kids are dealing with addiction to pornography and addiction to all sorts of things, substance abuse. They're in captivity and they can't do anything for God because they're in captivity. They're in bondage. And they grow up and they be Christians in bondage. And more people go to hell. It's an endless cycle. You say, well, doesn't that happen in just normal church? No, it doesn't because you hear the word of the Lord. Because you hear God's word. Thy word hath I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we need to get away from this youth group mentality because putting them in youth group is going to hurt them. Number one, it separates them from the flock. Two, it makes a breeding ground for reprobates, for false teachers. It makes a breeding ground for those things. Three, these people are not hearing the word and they're going to wind up going into captivity. They're going to be in bondage to things because it's going to, uh, th that playtime is going to fade. It's going to fade. The music's going to get old. The playtime's going to get fade. And I can't tell me how many kids that I know that are not in church now at all, period. They have nothing to do with God and they grew up and they were die-hard die youth group people. Youth group doesn't hold you in it, folks. Because you know what? If it's based on sensuality, it's based on how you make me feel, something else might make me feel better. Something else might make me feel better. But while you indulge the flesh, you get your ears tickled, people are going to hell. People are going to hell every day. And again, I, would, I say challenge you. Find me one youth group kid that could, probably, that could preach the gospel and get somebody saved. I would be shocked. I really would be surprised. In closing, you say you're just being nitpicky. You know what? It makes me mad because I've seen the, the, the youth groups that, of, of kids that have grown up with my wife when she was in youth group. Kids that we've seen whenever we were you know, young folks, kids that have grown up. And they're all, or not all, but a lot of them, they're worldly, they're drunks, they're sodomites, they're sympathizers. All of them came from youth group. All of them came from youth group. Very active, involved in youth group. Youth group doesn't produce soul winners, Bible readers, people on fire for God that love hard preaching. They don't choose, you know, so what do you want? What do you want? Do you want daycare? Do you want church for your kids, huh? What do you want? He said, well, you don't understand my youth pastor. He's such a great job. My children have learned so much. He's a wonderful teacher, you know? Churches need to cut the fat. They need to get rid of these guys and get these kids under some hard Bible preaching, you know? So to sit there and say that, oh, my youth preacher, he really does a good job or whatever, okay, then it doesn't matter. He's the, the exception proves the rule, okay? It's still wrong to separate the kids. It's still wrong to separate the kids. But here at All Scripture Baptist Church, you say, well, what do we have for your youth? We're going to get them out. They're going to go soul winning in the rain. We're going to try to have some fun activities for the kids, but we're going to get them out. We're going to get them soul winning. They're going to hear Bible preaching. And they're going to read the Bible. They're going to be encouraged to read the Bible. They're going to be encouraged to live for God. There's no frills about this. You know, this is real. This is real. We are real people here. There's no frills or anything about this. It is us making decisions, choosing every day whom we will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I pray that you would say that the same thing for your kids. Let's bow our heads for prayer.